Harness Continuous Delivery makes it extremely easy to start deploying an end-to-end -end application. You could quickly get started by creating a free account on app.harness.io. Once you log in, the Harness UI can serve as a one-stop shop for managing your pipelines, services, secrets, and other resources in your application lifecycle. But for those starting to use Harness CD for the first time, we now offer a Get Started interface that will guide you through your first deployment. It's designed to be both accessible and customized, and it leverages the Harness command line and your account info to deploy to the environment you choose. You'll arrive at this landing page after first creating your new project in the CD and GitOps module. From there, just click Get Started. Now let's pause a moment and talk about what this is going to have you do. The UI will take you through a guided checklist of the type of application, where you're deploying it, and how. It's a choose-your-own-adventure where you choose the setup method that makes sense for your environment. In addition, we provide the sample application to deploy in this walkthrough since the goal is to learn Harness more so than the logic of one app or another. In this example, we'll say we're deploying a Kubernetes service via Helm chart and using the Kubernetes API. All right, this next option is critical. We set the methodology, the how, that our deployment happens. In short, we have a couple different philosophies to choose from. Option one is we can set up a Harness CD pipeline that runs a sequence of steps to deploy the application when we trigger the pipeline. Option two is the GitOps route that leverages Argo CD. In that case, we watch the source repo and watch for events like a new commit to deploy a new version. It's ultimately your choice. For now, we'll go with CD pipeline. And that brings us to the delegate. Whichever option we choose, we need a way for our deployment infrastructure to talk to Harness. The delegate lives behind our network firewall, in our cluster, and is what runs the API calls to deploy the resources we need. That means the delegate itself needs to be deployed to our cluster. So that's what we'll do here with Helm. I have a Kubernetes cluster I can connect to with kubectl. I also have Helm installed. I add the chart repo, just pasting the command I copied from Harness. And make sure all's up to date. Now Harness is nice enough to provide the command to install the chart and provide the info it needs so it can talk to our Harness account. So we'll just copy that. And then we'll run it against our cluster. If we then run in NS, we see there's a new namespace called Harness Delegate that was created. And we see the delegate itself runs as a pod in that namespace. Back in Harness, we can verify that the comms between Harness and the delegate are working as well. All right, what is next? Okay, now is where we'll consider the application itself. This journey is going to have us deploy a sample web app provided by Harness. Along the way, we'll leverage the Harness command line interface to easily set up our deployment entities. We'll run this command block from our terminal to install the Harness CLI. It's very lightweight, just a single Go binary. Back in Harness, the UI gives us a button to generate an API key for our account so the command line tool can authenticate as your Harness user. The next step then asks you to fork the linked sample app we provide to your own GitHub account. So you'll literally just click the fork button in the GitHub interface. Okay, scrolling down a little, there's a bit going on here. Step 1.4 has us enter our GitHub credentials. Harness will then use those along with our Harness Access token to generate a bunch of commands we'll copy and paste to pull down the repo and provision all our Harness resources. We won't worry about the exact definitions of these entities for now. Just know they are references in Harness to what you're deploying and the infrastructure you're deploying to. You can see none of these services, environments, and so on existed yet, so Harness made them. OK, back to Harness. So we've defined what we're deploying. Now we set how the pipeline deploys it. We see the options are canary, blue-green, or rolling. Now while each of these strategies have their differences, they all have the same goal of ensuring our app meets certain standards before it's fully deployed. We've linked more details about each of them in the description. Long story short, we're going with canary here, which is an incremental approach with verification after each phase. We'll copy the command to create the Harness canary pipeline and run it in our local terminal. The output tells us the pipeline create succeeded, but let's verify in Harness. There's a convenient verify button, and it confirms as well from the Harness side. At last, this final screen confirms that all appeared to work, and a link is shown that if you click it, it takes you to the Canary pipeline you created. We're now at the Pipeline Views page, where we're prompted to trigger our first pipeline execution. 
and we can see the pipeline execution steps visually represented. Now remember, this is real software deployed to real infrastructure, our cluster outside of Harness. So we see here that the deployment appeared to be successful, but we need to go back to our local environment to access our app. Let's check our cluster and look at that. We have three replicas of something called Guestbook. That's the web app we wanted to deploy. And also an accompanying service. Since it's a service, let's see if we can access it. And there it is. Our pipeline in Harness executed this deployment in our local cluster. So that completes the getting started workflow. It's great. We were able to get started with a completed pipeline deployment. That said, you might have a lot of questions, maybe around a lot of the Harness entities we created like the delegate, service, environment, and so forth. Couple recommendations. First, keep exploring around the UI and also read up on the docs that cover the major entity types and what they represent. We've linked some of those in the description. Second, practice, practice, practice. Harness Developer Hub has tutorials for the other deployment types we didn't do, along with just loads of other resources about the Harness platform as a whole. So we encourage you to spend some time there. Thank you for watching. We hope to be as helpful as we can as you continue using Harness to get ship done.